everybody. Marisa Juarez here, and I am going to talk today about whole class workshops, which is something that I adapted after coming to CNM and soon being overwhelmed by five courses. And before coming here, I was used to work uh, working with students one on one in their draft and, and revision process, conferencing with them, like many of you have done, I'm sure. And I soon realized that that was going to be really unsustainable for me. And I was looking for ways to ensure that students would get feedback on the draft process while not killing myself. So after talking to a few colleagues who teach at other institutions, I learned about whole class workshops, which will probably be familiar to many of you creative writers because this is adapted from the creative writing workshop. So how does this work? Well, in my classes, peer review usually takes place over two course periods. The first course period, students work one-on-one -on -one peer reviewing each other's paper, providing feedback, and so forth. On that class period, I will collect electronic copies of drafts from workshop participants who have volunteered to have their work read and, again, workshopped by the entire class. I post those drafts to Blackboard. We all read them as a class, write critiques, and then the second day of our um, peer review process is devoted to um, in-depth critique of three, two to three student drafts. So very quickly to get go over some logistical elements of the whole class workshop model for instructors. Um, it's important that you collect and post um, student drafts about two days before the workshop. That's going to ensure that students have 48 hours to read and then read the drafts and then write their critique. Um, second, it's important to remind students to bring two hard copies of their critique uh, because they need to give one copy to the writer that they've critiqued and then one to the instructor to grade. And then finally, um, I make sure to read all the drafts and develop questions prior to the workshop and then I also comment on um, student drafts, uh, the student who's, whose papers are being workshopped. I think that's optional and I know many instructors who do um, only verbal feedback, not written, so that's kind of up to you. Um, next I wanted to show you how I have this set up on Blackboard. Um, before the workshop, I give students Excuse me. Before the workshop, I give student, uh, students hard copies of workshop expectations and guidelines, and I also give them hard copies of the critique assignment along with an example critique, just so they kind of know what is expected of them. Um, ideally, I would put this on my Blackboard folder as well so they have a backup e-copy of these assignments. I didn't hear, but um, I've done hard copy in the past simply because then students don't have an excuse like I never saw it, I didn't see it in the folder, I've heard it all. Okay, so from my English 1101 course page, I set up a whole class workshop folder. I usually put that somewhere near the top um, because we do this three times a semester, once for each major assignment. And I label um, the files by date. So these are the dates that the workshops are actually taking place. And then you notice in some cases I put like what assignment we're working on. So we'll just look at this sample from February 15th last, or earlier this year, excuse me. So I have all the drafts in one file that makes it easier for students to access and to download. After reading this 10 pages, students are going to choose one writer to whom they will address their critique. And then again, they print two copies and bring it to class so that we can discuss. Um, let me just quickly go over some of the materials for students again. Um, I said that they will need workshop guidelines and expectations, so this is something that you can set up and establish um, depending on your own pedagogy. Um, it's really important, I think, that they have an example so that they know what a critique looks like. I typically have them do it in letter format, so it's a little bit more informal. And I grade them based on the level of engagement. So did they really provide thoughtful, specific, um, feedback that shows that they really did um, engage with the work. And I have it set up to where um, students will start out with a summary, they move on to strengths of the draft, what's working well, specific revision suggestions, any questions that they have for the writer, and then a, a thank you and a, a signature. So again, just a kind of a letter format. Um, and then finally, they need to make sure that they have access to the workshop drafts on Blackboard. Students will often say, I didn't know how to find the drafts, I didn't know where they were, oh, they were supposed to be read today. So that's been, I think, the most significant challenge I've faced with this, is that um, having them to access the drafts online at home, 
sometimes will result in excuses as to why they did not do that. So I always make it a point to show them how to access that on the day before, or the class period for, before we actually do the workshop. I'm going to go ahead and post um, the examples of the guidelines and the assignment that I use in my class, and so you can download them from ELPS. And if you have any questions, please be sure to email me at mwatisascnm.edu. And if you have ideas for how to improve upon uh, my model, please do share them because I know I'm always looking for ways to make this more seamless. Thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great semester.